Hi, I'm Todd Poor, and in this video we are going to be learning how to build triad chords and arpeggios. Um, now, what is an arpeggio? Well, um, if you were to take all the notes in a chord, say this one, here's a really common one, right? G major, and if I played all those notes individually, that's an arpeggio technically. All right, um, now we're going to break these down to the simplest form so we can uh, really understand how these work and how we use them. Um, now, a couple things we should be sure we know before uh, we really start diving into this. Um, I think we really want to know the notes on our instrument. Um, reading music is definitely going to help. And um, make sure you know your intervals as well. So notes and intervals are the big thing. I have plenty of videos demonstrating all those things. Type in Todd Poor intervals or uh, Todd Poor notes on the guitar, any of that stuff, and um, you can figure it all out if you don't already know it. If you do, then I think we're good to go. Okay, now um, there are going to be four types of triads. Um, two of them are really, really common and you use them probably all the time. Uh, two of them are not so common. Um, the most common types are probably just the major chord and the minor chord. The next kind, um, diminished, this is kind of an unusual one, or at least not as common anyways. So there is a C diminished arpeggio chord, sorry, that's what it's going to sound like. And then the other kind, I would say this is maybe um, more unusual than that, just because it doesn't occur naturally in a major scale, and that is the augmented that uh, nice sound, right? Okay, um, so basically what it comes down to, when we build chords, we need a root, a third, and a fifth for our triad chords. Um, so that means there are only three different notes in every plain old major and minor chord that you play. Um, and we're going to take a bunch of uh, really basic chords, common chords, and we're going to break them apart so that way we can try to make some sense out of this stuff. Um, so let's start with uh, C. We're going to do all four types off of a C and then we'll kind of play around with them in some other keys. So find a C on the guitar. I have one here at uh, fret 3, string 5. Alright, now count your way up from C, one, a third up from there because we need a, the root, which is C, we'll call that one. We need the, the third, C, D, E. All right, so we have our root and our third. Um, now we need the fifth, C, D, E, F, G. So the three notes that are gonna make up the C major chord would be C, E, G, okay? Now take any C major chord that you know on the guitar and pick through it and learn the notes in there, all right? Here's probably the most common one, right? Go through that. Um, you may be saying, okay, well, I'm playing five strings in that chord. How are there only three notes? Well, several of those notes get doubled in octaves. So there really are only three different pitches in this chord. Check it out. The root is C. There's E, that's our third. There's G, that third string open. There's another C on string two. And that's just E again, right? So only three notes. Okay, now if we want to... Um, get a minor chord, we need to take the third and lower it a half step. So C, E flat, G. Okay, now be thinking about the intervals too between these um, because this is going to be really important and very helpful, I think. Um, so in a major chord, you have a major third between the root and the third, and then a minor third from the third to the fifth. And a perfect fifth from the root to the fifth. All right, so think about all those things when you're doing this. Now, in a minor chord, you want a minor third then from the root to the third, major third from the third to the fifth, still a perfect fifth. All right, so the only thing that changes from a major chord to a minor chord is the quality of the third. All right, so we have C, E flat, G. Okay, now, real quick, um, this note, E flat, we 
can think of that note as a D sharp, but not when you're building a C minor chord. Okay, and here is why. Because when you build chords, you need to build in thirds. That's how chords are built in our music system. So we can't call it a D sharp. We have to call it an E of some sort, right? Because we need C, D, E. It has to be an E, okay? So that's why I'm calling it E flat, not D sharp. All right, moving on then. The next type, um, the diminished triad. It's an easy shape. It's all minor thirds. So C to E flat to G flat, okay? And notice again, I call it G flat, not F sharp. Okay, um, so maybe one way to play this as a chord, something like that. I have my first finger on my C, I have my middle finger on my uh, um, G flat there. Notice we have the, the diminished fifth or the tritone from the root to the fifth in this chord, and then I skip to the second string and I play fret four to give me an E flat, okay? And there's one way of playing that uh, diminished triad as a chord. Um, again, here it is as a triad, okay? And then the um, final type, the augmented triad. So in this case, we would maybe want to think back to major real quick where we have um, C natural, E natural, and then I take my fifth, not the natural five, but we have to raise that. So you have uh, two major thirds in a row for that chord. C to E to G sharp. Okay, so there are the four types. Now we kind of know the intervals between them all and uh, how to you know, maybe get through them on, on our instrument. Um, so now let's maybe take a couple really common chords and uh, see if we can build them and we'll play a shape for them and we'll break the shape down and learn all the notes in them and kind of compare them to what we've been doing here. Um, all right, so what if we took um, a D major first? So I want to First thing I want to do is um, spell out my thirds off of a D note. So I would get D, E, F, then I would want to go another third up from F. So F, G, A. So the notes are going to be D, I have F, and A. Now take a listen to that. That sounds minor, right? want to raise that F to an F sharp. Okay, so here is maybe a good reason why we would maybe want to know our key signatures as well. Because if you think about the key of D major, there is an F sharp in that key. Alright? Uh, but then again, just use your ear. Use the interval shapes. We know it should go major third, minor third for a major chord, right? major third, minor third, from the root to the fifth is a perfect fifth. Okay, now let's go through that really basic D major shape. Um, so, I have four strings in this chord, but three different notes, that's it. Uh, string four is a D, string three fret two is an A, this note right here, string two fret three, that's another D, and here is our F sharp. There it is. If we wanted to make that into D minor, all we'd have to do is take the third F sharp and lower it to F natural. Now if you think about the key of uh, D minor, you have an F natural in that key. So um, another reason why we want to know our key signatures, right? And the notes on the guitar and our intervals. Okay. Um, let's do a couple more then. Um, how about A minor? Let's spell this thing real quick. A, B, C. A, B, C, D, E. So A, C, and E give me my root, third, fifth. 
That sounds pretty minor to me, so I think we're set. And think about the key signature of A minor, no sharps, no flats. All right, so take our basic A minor shape and let's uh, pick through this. A, E, A, C, E. Three notes, making our triad. All right, um, one more. How about um, F sharp minor? So I'm starting on F sharp. I want to build thirds, and we know our minor chord should go minor third, major third. So F sharp to A, A to not, not D flat, but C sharp. It's important that we call it C sharp. And then we pick this chord apart. We know it's a minor chord. There are no added notes, no ninths, no sevenths, just plain minor. So three notes in the chord. F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A, C sharp, F sharp. All right, so um, there it is. A little bit of uh, chord building theory for you. So again, um, if some of that stuff isn't really making sense, again, I think go back, study the notes on the guitar, um, study the intervals and practice, practice, practice. It all makes more sense the more that you do it, I guess, or at least it did for me anyways. So uh, there you have it. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you check out some of my other videos and we'll see you guys next time.